If you've watched my previous video, you will know that I love all things Sonoran Desert, so I have ordered some millipedes from that area, a species that no one has been able to breed in captivity. This is going to need quite a bit of research, and that's coming up. Okay, so this species was listed on the Spider Shop UK as gold millipedes, wild caught from the US. I was aware that Orthoporus ornatus was native to the Sonoran Desert, however I wasn't aware of the different phases that occur according to location. I'm now aware that the gold phase that I have is a Texas locality and not the Sonoran Desert slash Arizona locality I ideally want, which is a brown colour. Nonetheless, this is the species that I have now or the phase that I have now. As far as I'm aware, there is only one successful breeding of Orthoporus onatus, but I can't find a written account anywhere, just passing comments made on forums. So I'm left to do some of my own research and develop my own tactics. I started with just searching for Orthoporus onatus breeding, and that led me to a thread on arachnoboards from 2013. basic summary of what I found was people discussing how the species can't be bred and the potential theories as to why. There are some interesting thoughts about the monsoon season playing a part in breeding as well as organic materials needed for wrapping the eggs. A search on Google Scholar gave me lots of results from the 70s, but not much recently. I found an interesting piece called the A Year Long Summary of Their Life. The basic summary is that they emerge during the monsoon season around mid-May and then feed on a number of detritus including prickly pear cactus, a pad that I later provide them with. In late summer, around the end of the monsoon season, the millipedes return to their fossorial lifestyle after eating almost 1.5 times their body mass and food. Inside their burrows they enter a state of dormancy to survive the dormant season. The millipedes then lay dormant using their fat reserves to survive until the months before the rains arrive. Now just a month before the rains arrive they undergo their annual molt before emerging with the rains and the whole cycle starts again. Now it's unclear at what point reproduction takes place but my hunch is that, that the mating takes place during the summer periods and the eggs are laid waiting to hatch and emerge the following year. Perhaps they hatch a month before the rains, just like the adults molt a month before the rains. With that in mind, this is how I set them up. You can see opening them up that one is very active and alert, and the other not so much. Now I put this down to dehydration, they just need to be rehydrated again, but I don't actually think this animal is okay. So like before we discussed that arid top layer and that humid layer belief that they can retreat to in times of drought. So I want to create that divide with this enclosure. So I'm adding a mixture of Arcadia, earth mix mixed with play sand and some leaf litter. Now I'll go through this at quite a deep level of substrate. I want them to have the opportunity to dig down. It's important to give calcium in the substrate as well. So I'm doing that with uh, eggshells. I'm going to stay quiet here because I like the sort of ASMR vibe to this. So you can see me adding the eggshells here now. I'm adding this evenly across the substrate. I'm also adding in some calcium carbonate as well, just to bolster the amount of calcium in the substrate. You can see that I've actually sprayed down the substrate layer to make it that humid microclimate beneath. Now I'm giving it a good mix in. Now I've got all that set up, I'm adding in some bone dry topsoil mixed with play sand to simulate that arid top layer of soil that you'd find in the desert. So you can see here that I've got a arid top layer here all the way down to a moist layer down there. So I've got a gradient of humidity. And you can see here, after introducing 
The smaller one is more alert than the other, and he's on his way straight away. I don't think that that bit larger individual is okay. This young individual is very active compared to the other. However, the other one did start to move very gingerly. This was the most I ever saw this individual move. It slowly walked away under the leaf litter and was not seen again. So the morning after I find the larger individual dead. Now I didn't think it was okay to begin with but then I put it down to just being dehydrated and just needed some hydration to, to perk itself up again. But sadly that isn't the case and I found it dead. This could be anything from the animal is wild caught so it could have been caught at an old age anyway or it could have been at the spider shop for so long that it's actually matured and aged and was old that way or it could have parasites it could have anything because it's wild caught nonetheless the individual will stay within the collection albeit not alive but i will frame it along with some other inverts you can see that i've got to frame <laughs> 